So the idea is to keep this against there. If you get it poor and it comes away, scoopy scoopy, high ah. shots, and you don't want that, do you? <laughs> okay, get you. You get it? That makes sense. There we go. That makes sense. Hello, welcome to me and my golf. We're your coaches, Andy and Pierce, and it's time for the Impact Show where we're talking about how to create good wrist angles at impact. Yes, let's take charge of your game. So thank you for joining us here on the beautiful 10th hole at the Asprey in Shropshire, England. Pierce, we are talking about impact today. Pretty important impact, isn't it? It's, uh, it helps it if helps. you've got a good impact. It helps if you've got a good impact. And we're talking really about the wrist angles and some of the issues that we see as golf coaches. Yeah. And these issues are reoccurring. A lot of golfers who come to us for coaching, we generally see the same things happening. And with irons, it's so important, Pierce, because it has a massive effect on consistency of strike, yes. trajectory, and also distance. So before we get into sort of talking about the drills, let's talk about what we see with the students that see us um, okay. in terms of the wrist angles and how it affects the ball flight. Well, the, the thing with wrist angles is there are multiple swing faults that happen as a result for compensating for poor wrist angles yeah. and what have you. And, and obviously swing faults are, you know, bad wrist angles that have got names as well. So, but I think what we see with golfers when they're struggling with these wrist angles is because they're actually struggling to control the club face or put the club face in what we call a strong or neutral position. I'll show you what I mean by that now. So we may see this in the backswing where we get a lot of rotation of the club face, creating loft, opening the club face, we would call that, maybe getting a bit too much cup in that wrist. Carrying on to the top, we see a lot of cup in the wrist. We see the club face open, swinging down into the transition, into the downswing. Again, we can see the cup, we can see the club face open. And then as a result, trying to square the club face up, we again see this cupping of that lead hand and that's this trail hand here is a little bit too straight as we're striking the golf ball. And how does that affect the shot? Well, this is probably going to bottom out before the golf ball. So I could duff it, I could thin it, I could hit it very high and it's definitely not going to have as much ball speed off the face because I'm getting my seven iron here and I'm pretty much turning it into an eight iron or even a nine iron. Okay, so what Pierce is saying is then this cup in the lead wrist is causing some issues. If we can get rid of this cup in the lead wrist, yes then we're gonna improve the impact and improve yeah. the ball flight. Now, interested to get your thoughts, guys. This cup in the wrist, what is it actually called from a golf science terminology? Post your comments down below and we will pin the winner for that. Can I answer? No, you can't answer. Do you know it? No. <laughs> so, talk us through what we see the best players okay. in the world doing and then how that affects the impact as well. Well, it's interesting with the best players in the world because in the backswing, for them, it often doesn't really matter. But for amateur golfers, we would say it does. So don't just think that it doesn't matter, but, we, we can see a club face which is in a strong position, a neutral position or an open position with the best players in the world because what they're very good at is as they start their downswing, they get that wrist here and they flatten it out. So if it is cupped or if it's DJ'd, it is coming down into a flatter position. So you can see as it's coming down with this flat position, the club face is in a lot stronger position. As I then move into the golf ball, it's a lot easier to lean the shaft forward. It's a lot easier to keep this left wrist flatter get a bit more bend in this back wrist, this right wrist, and as you can see, I'm gonna hit that golf ball with a lot less loft yep. than I would be with obviously that position there. And then the bottom of the swing is going to be after the golf ball, so the strike is going to be purer, the ball speed is gonna be faster, it's gonna be lower, and we definitely hit more greens. Okay, well just do me a favor, Pierce, let's hit one shot, yep. just showing that, and we'll get a slow-mo, and we'll show impact, we'll freeze at impact. Showing the good one, is this a drill or a is good this a one. full shot? Just hit a shot for me. Full shot, okay. Yeah, and we're just gonna show impact. All right, this, well this is actually from 20 years of coaching, this is something that I'm lucky I don't have a problem with. Yeah, P P Pierce is pretty good with that. You can see a slight brush <laughs> of the ground after the golf ball and you'll see on the slow-mo Pierce's impact, the shaft definitely will be leaning forward. Absolutely. Now look, we want to have a drill, Pierce, that is going to help the guys feel yes. this at home and create good wrist angles through the golf, golf ball. I'm going to give you the iPad there. It's interesting you say at home because literally you can do this at home or in the office. So, iPad. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get it so it plays. You, you made this up, didn't you? I think were you having a walk somewhere? I was you walking somewhere with it? my iPad. Yeah. yeah, there we go. So we actually got the iPad and you can press it against your forearm. Obviously, we can see what that's doing to the wrist. So you could start with it off if you wanted to, if you felt that you wanted to cup the backswing to get a longer swing or whatever. But definitely in your transition, we want that iPad on that forearm. So you could keep the iPad on the way back, but definitely on the way down, we have to have it on that forearm as you go down. But also, we're not just doing this. So we're not just pulling the arm down, we're obviously rotating and squaring the iPad up to the golf ball. But you can see here from the front on view that I've got this sort of bow in the lead wrist there. So obviously that's gonna be de-lofting it. And then as I carry on through, I rotate. 
So I am literally keeping it connected, rotating as I go through the ball. And just go to impact there for me, Pierce. And what you'll notice with the iPad, you can see how the iPad is wanting to lean forward. A poor impact shows the poor impact. There we go, the iPad is leaning backward. A lot of cup in the wrist, a lot of height and the issues that we talked about there. So it's a great way of feeling what we'd like to get through impact, sure isn't is. it? It sure is. And then I think from there, it's really simple. You know, if you do go to the range and you take your iPad, you know, do some swings like that and then hit a few mini ones, really feeling that you're recreating it. Yeah, I think these short swings are really good for that, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so from here, just a little back swing, little through swing. You can see how low the ball flight was there. Look at the finish as well. I'm very much aware and feeling that I'm getting the iPad and I've got it jammed in here yeah. still. I think a lot of people will hit these shots and they'll actually be here. Yeah. So what we need to do is actually freeze when you hit your shot and assess, are you here or are you here? Zach yeah. Johnson, that feels like Zach Johnson. So we have one more full one, one more, full So one. mini shots is a really good way to get the feeling of keeping that iPad in there and just getting the wrist angles good through the golf ball again, avoiding that cup, build it up to the longer golf swings and hopefully you'll get somewhere near what Pierce creates. And that was nice. a beauty. It's amazing though, even into this finish now, I'm very much aware that this wrist is a lot flatter than perhaps it normally would be. Yeah, it's just about creating feelings. And I think, you know, if we can give you guys drills that create feelings to take to the shot, then it has a massive impact on the shot, doesn't it? It sure does, it sure does. Okay guys, look, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, if you found some value in that, please hit the like button. It really does help us grow and reach as many golfers as possible. We really want to continue to do that for you guys. And we have a turn your slice into a draw coaching plan. One of our best coaching plans has been re-upgraded. So it's a four week plan showing you how to get rid of your slice and turn it into a draw. So if you want to turn that slice into a draw, then this coaching plan is definitely for you. And you can sign up for free and watch it for free at meandmygolf.com by clicking the link in the corner and we will see you over there. Thanks for watching.